Hi everybody, let's take a look at another vintage pistol, an Italian 1889 Bodeo that's having a little trouble with the loading gate. Hi everybody, Cycle Camp here. Uh, today we're going to be trying a repair of a uh, Bodeo model 1889. Uh, this is the uh, type that was used by the uh, enlisted people because you can, you can tell that because it does not have a trigger guard and instead utilizes the, the folding trigger. Uh, I've got the gun 90% stripped. This is the second time I've tried to repair this. I did not bother making a video of the first time because I failed so badly. And basically what's wrong with this firearm, uh, the firearm it times perfectly, it locks up beautifully, and the only thing that's wrong with it is the loading gate mechanism is screwed up. The Bodeo incorporates an Adabi, that's A-D-A-B-I-E, gate loading system. And in the Adabi gate loading system, uh, I have the gate removed right now, um, but basically there's a pin that goes inside this, this uh, slot, and that pin operates on this notch, which is part of the, uh, which is part of the, sear for the trigger, uh, for the hammer. And and if you push the sear in like this, you can see the, how this moves. When you pull this in, the, the trigger cannot engage it. So basically, the, the idea was that with, with the hammer down, you would, pull the, you would pull the loading gate back, and you could pull the trigger, and the cylinder would revolve but the hammer would not. The hammer would not move at all. So you could, you know, squeeze it, put one in, squeeze it, put one in, squeeze it, put one in, and it was, I, you know, I don't know if that was supposed to be faster or not, uh, because you, you still had to pop out the old ones with the, uh, you still had to pop out the old ones uh, with, with the extractor, you know, with the, the, the little uh, extractor thing, which I also have removed. The extractor would have run the extractor would have run on this. This is the cylinder, keeps the cylinder in place. Um, so, on mine, the, the uh, pin was broken. So, on the gate, here's the gate, the, this pin was broken off way back here. And I was able to buy another gate, I'm uh, sorry, another pin. This, this pin actually is put on the gate through this screw. There's a little assembly here that, that, uh, that this goes into. Um, and I was able to find another one uh, from a guy that, that does old revolvers at, uh, at Tulsa this past April, but I was unable, the, 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 the pin was slightly damaged, it was bent a little bit, and because it was a piece of hardened steel, we tried to get it right and we ended up snapping it off. So it, it did not work out. So we went back to the old one that had, like I said, a pin about that long, and my, my brother-in-law, the, uh, the uh, machinist, uh, hobbyist machinist, was able to weld a new piece of stainless steel onto the existing pin. And what I did, uh, I, used a, uh, I used a micrometer to reach in here and figure out how far down it had to be, and I asked him to leave it long. So basically, when we put this on here, let's take a, take a little look here. When we put this back on, if we open this up, and let's see if I can get it so you can see it. Uh, the lighting is it's going to be tough with the lighting, but let's, let's see if I can make this uh, visible. So I think, you, yeah, now you can, you can see it in there, right? You can see it moving back and forth, which is cool. But it's too long. If you look down the, if you look at the, at the uh, trigger, you can see the, you can, uh, you can, not the trigger, the hammer. If you look at the hammer, you can see the cutout on the sear here, and you can see that that pin down inside there is way too long. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to gunsmith this, and we're going to start uh, re removing material from the end of this pin so that we can, uh, so that we can get this in here. And that's going to be our, our uh, that's what we're going to try to do today. Now, uh, I, this is a, uh, also, it's too long to even go all the way back up. If you were to try to bring this, this, this gate should come all the way up onto this little ledge, and there's a, there's a cutout on the, you can see there's a little notch here on the, uh, on the gate, and that notch should fit right on top of here. But uh, that's not working either, because inside here, 
you've got the same issue. You you can't you can't quite reach the uh, you can't quite reach the front of this because there's some material in the way because the pin is too long. So what we're going to do is start start shaving this up and see if we can get this Atta B gate loading system uh, repair. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording here and I'm gonna get my tools out and I'm gonna start reducing this down. Uh, and I'll be back in just a minute. We'll see how long this is going to take. Okay, for you, those of you that are interested, I have put a mark on the end of this. I don't need to take off much. I only asked them to leave a few, a few thousands on there. And I'm going to use a Dremel tool because uh, I'm afraid to attack it with a file. I want something high speed that's not going to put a lot of pressure on the part. And uh, let's, let's see what happens. Excuse me, I have to turn the power on. I haven't taken all of it off from where I started, but I thought, you know, you want to be kind of careful. There's, there's an awful lot of material. Now, I can't move it forward, so I know it's not right, because I can't move it forward. All the way forward. So, still, still got to take some more off. I am wearing safety glasses, for those of you that are wondering. Oh, now that time, now it came up forward. Now the way people probably broke this in the first place is, if you try to pull this back while the uh, hammer's engaged, well, so you can see the, I pulled it back, you can see it moving the, you can see it moving the uh, sear, which is cool. But the question is, will I do it when it's, ouch, ouch, sorry, caught my finger in there. And it looks like it might work, it might be just a little tight yet. You can see the hammer moving back just a little bit when I do that. Pull the trigger. Oh, look at that, beautiful. And now, now the trigger does not engage the hammer. So... We're going to take this off one more time. I'm just going to look to see if I, I do need to dress it up just a little bit. There's a little bit of peening on it there, so let me, uh, let me just clean it up just a little. Flatter. Okay. Now let us stick this in again. And it goes forward all the way like it's supposed to. That's great. We'll bring it back. And it's uh, moving the thing like it should. Let's put it up here and bring it back. Okay, now just to make sure this is still right, what we're going to do is we're going to put the spring clip back in here so that this can't walk out as it's coming back because I've been holding it 
but I'm not sure that I'm yeah see it looks like it's walking a little bit so I might I might have to take just a little bit more off it so let's get the uh, get the bag of parts for this particular gun uh, here's here's all the rest of the parts you got the, the, got the grips the uh, extractor pin and a bag of other junk We have the side plate for the firearm. That side plate goes on this side. Pretty cool design. I'll show you that in a minute. The side plate, cylinder, and a couple of screws. And I'm pretty sure, and I don't see the piece I want. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here is the, this is the, the, uh, cat, the uh, it's sort of a plate with a little catch on it, and it, it, it's under spring tension. Not a lot of spring tension, but a little. Sorry, I left my left my radio on. So you put this in here, and then this little this little piece with the little cutout and this and the stop is going to go right here. It fits inside a slot, and then oh, I, I don't have a screwdriver. <laughs> well, duh. Very exciting. Uh, screwdriver and let's find the screw and then we'll match up the right tip you always want you always want to use hollow ground screwdrivers when you're working on this stuff and you want to get one the biggest one you can use without going over the edge of the screw so we'll try this and see if this works Okay, and when we put this on, that'll tighten up just a bit. It does not go flat, it just tightens up a little bit. Okay, we'll pull it back. Yep, and that looks good. So, let's throw the cylinder in. And you put the cylinder in and you push this piece in when you get it lined up, which I do not have it lined up. There we go. This is a little on the tight side. Try again. Okay, and then this swings down to uh, keep that all together. So when you when you when you pull the trigger and you see the lockup on this, well, right now it's not working right because I didn't, I got uh, parts disconnected here, but. It locks up nice and tight, but what's supposed to happen is if I pull this back, now when I squeeze it, you see the, the cylinder moves, but the hammer does not, and that allows you to load it quickly, if it was empty. I mean, you still have to, you still have to use the uh, pin, the extractor pin, to push the rounds out. But I think that's pretty successful. I, you know, if you look, there it is, you now it's doing its thing. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to take it apart again, and you may ask, why are we going to take it apart again? And the reason for that is uh, because we don't have any bluing on that. Uh, we don't have any bluing on that part. That part's in the raw. Now it is stainless steel. Parts of it are stainless steel anyway, so it should be okay. But why, uh, why take a chance? So I'm just going to use a uh, bluing pen. To put some blue on there, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not going to bother with expensive cold blue or any of that. We will move to the blue pen. And worst comes to worst, I'll I'll just oil it up good and start over. So, so degrees. Supply lightly a felt tip. Rinse with water. Dry above. Yeah. yeah, this one's working a lot better. You can see the. You can see it blowing right up here. Now this this particular pen, you do have to uh, you have to stop the action by rinsing it with water. But we'll uh, we'll just use this. And, uh, basically, I'm just doing this for rust protection. Though the gun isn't 
to be honest with you, the gun is in pretty bad shape, so I'm not real as far as surface rust is concerned. So, and this is an internal part, so no big deal. But uh, you can see here, we'll blew this up and get it working right. And while we're in here, we'll maybe grab some of this other stuff. Don't think it's going to make a big difference. I think the black would have looked better, but since all I really care about is the rust inhibitive properties, uh, since it's all inside and you can't see any of it, I, this this ought to be just fine. And you can see this, you know, this works pretty good. You know, it turned it turns it nice and blue, almost black, pretty good. Well, I have put something on my shopping list. Have to go get another black pen. Okay. All right. So let's take this downstairs and rinse it off. I'll be back in just a moment. And we are back. Uh, I do want to mention, uh, I forgot to mention it before, when you use this kind of, uh, or actually I think any kind of uh, bluing, um, you need to degrease the part before you start. And I had done that before I started, uh, uh, you know, working on it with the Dremel. So uh, I didn't feel bad about that. And the, the, you know, it looks like it's, you know, fairly well flat. It's in good shape. Now I am going to put a little bit of very, very light dusting of oil on it because it does operate against the it does operate against the uh, sear on the hammer hopefully I didn't say trigger wrong too many times but anytime I said trigger and I meant uh, uh, and I meant hammer please uh, forgive me okay so actually while we're right here I am going to strip this, I'm going to fire this gun, and I'm going to uh, strip it and, uh, and uh, do a detailed clean on it after I get done firing it. Uh, and yes, we did find the ammunition for this. Uh, there is a company that makes the Italian Ordnance 10.4 by 23 millimeter rimmed. And I was able to get some. So we are going to take this out to the range after we get through putting it all together. We're going to take this puppy out to the range and uh, see what it can do. Now I don't, I'm not, you know, terribly, I don't think it'll be terribly accurate. It's an incredibly old gun. Uh, let's see, can we see that? No, we can't see it. Well, I had the, uh, I suppose I could try to do that again. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to take it out and shoot it first, and then I'll worry about all that stuff. So the other interesting thing about this is this uh, side plate. Really, a really cool... Uh, way this thing works it has a, a tang and that tang goes into this hole in the front of the uh, frame and then you just lay it down and it has a captive screw in it with a with a little welded on knob if you will and uh, you just screw it on now this one's out of time when you get done screwing it it ought to be like out here someplace but, uh, hey, you can't win them all. So I'll just leave it like that. And then it has the two, the two uh, pieces for the, for the uh, what do you call it? Oh, let's see, I should have put that on first, idiot that I am. The two pieces for the uh, grips. They also have little, little tangs on them, and you just slide them in and put this back on. Sorry about that. Too many guns. You know, it's hard to remember how to put them all together because there's too many of them running around out here. 
and then on this side you drop it in and it just nestles in and then you very gently put the other screw in. Now again these are uh, these are the original grips and they're made out of wood and needless to say they're wicked old so you have to be careful when you put these in do not over tighten these look at that in beautiful and this is supposed to be out here and then we drop it in and it goes in like that so so the the uh, extractor shaft goes in the center of the <coughs> excuse me of the shaft that's used to hold the cylinder on and when you want to when you want to uh, unload the gun you pull the gate back you pull the shaft out and then rotate it up come on there. and rotate it up and then it, it you know you can use it to pop out the use it to pop out the rounds and there's a, a spring here, and that spring catches the uh, catches this uh, the end of this and keeps it from coming out. But it doesn't do a very good job. The spring is uh, not in good shape. You can just I don't know if you can see it inside there, but uh, you can see it just over floating the tab of the spring. You can see it just floating over the top of the shaft, and it should be down a little further. It should come down and ride down and catch that edge sorry ride down ride down this taper and catch that edge that's what it's supposed to do but doesn't really do a very good job of that so oh well anyway so that's the bodeo and uh now we're going to take it out uh take it out to the range and uh see what it does maybe i'll uh, maybe i'll show you the ammunition first of course i don't know where i stored it hold on a minute let me go get it out of the Okay, so here's the box of uh, Italian ordnance that I was able to buy. Uh, 50 rounds, never going to need that much. Ooh, that's not good. That one looks like it's got a dented primer on it. Anyway, so this is uh, this brass was manufactured. It was uh, uh, manufactured by a company that takes Starline. 44 Russian and then uh, uh, What do you call it? Uh, you know reforms it and makes this 20 this 44 uh, Sorry this 10.4 millimeter. So this is 10.4 by 23 millimeter rimmed and that's basically what they look like They're You know, they're pretty good size, but there's not a lot of powder behind them So we'll we'll see what it looks like when we take it out to the range Camp here. We're back at the uh, Windsor Marksman's range, and today we're going to try shooting the Italian Bodeo 1889. This is the uh, enlisted model with the fold uh, with the folding trigger. Uh, we just got through repairing the gate loading mechanism on this, and we have never shot this firearm before. This will be the first time shooting it. We bought it uh, in 2018, and we're waiting to fix the gate loading mechanism before we took it out to the range. So. Uh, we have some 10.4 by 23 millimeter uh, ammunition that was uh, hand loaded. Uh, I'll, I'll find the when I get back to the house. I will find the where I bought this and hopefully put that in the uh, in the video. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot uh, at 15 yards. I don't have a second camera set up today. Sorry, but I will take a picture of the target uh, after the. After I do the um, single action and before I start the double action, so I'll I'll take two pictures of the target after after we shoot. Uh, again, this is a military piece, so I have no idea how it's going to load or, or operate, and we shall see. So with the Adapi uh, loading system, you drop one in, you pull the trigger, that advances you to the next cylinder. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, pull the trigger, and pull the trigger. And now we have all, all six loaded up. So I will release the gate. And we'll start with, we'll start with a single fire. This has one of those little small uh, grips on it. This, let me, let me put this down. 
Uh, this has the smaller grips on it. This, because of the way the grips and the general frame size looked, they called this the leg of lamb. That was the uh, uh, nickname for this pistol with the, the, with the Italian soldiers. So I thought that was pretty cool. I am going to use, it has a very poor uh, sight picture. Oh, I got nothing. I'm going to put that set. Now that could be for a couple reasons. It could be uh, the ammunition. It could also be uh, the uh, firing pin itself. I'm going to open the gate and just swing that over. I don't see anything on the. I don't see anything on the uh, primer, so that's not good. Let's try it again. Nope. Nothing again. Huh. Well, let it set a minute. Yeah, I would say we have a firing pin problem because this, the hammer appears to be all the way down, but it is not actually touching the round. So let's, uh, Let's unload this. Wow, that looks to me like it that really ought to work. It is coming. It is coming down all the way back here, and I do see the pin sticking out quite a bit. So I'm not exactly sure why this isn't going off. Let's put it back together again. Maybe I didn't have the loading gate uh, all the way forward. That might be doing it. Yeah, that might have been it. I might not have had the loading gate all the way forward. Okay, now right, let's try it again. I think that's what it was. I think the loading gate was just not all the way forward. Let's try it again. Well, that time it hung, it's hung up on something. I would say the loading gate is not locking up properly. I may have to adjust that again. Because when I do uh, make sure to push it forward, it does seem to work. Of course, I've got two that I haven't fired here. That's probably one of the empties. Empty, empty, empty. Find the, the good ones. I got a couple light strikes on the good ones, on the bad ones, I mean. So let's, uh, we'll get those out of here. And we'll try them again.
this one rotates clockwise. That was an ammunition problem. I definitely, uh, I definitely got a good strike on it. Okay, so that's six. We'll pull out the, pull out the empties. I actually didn't check to see if the uh, Atabi would put these. Yeah, it puts them in the right place for ejection, too. That's pretty cool. All right, well, we'll leave this open. And I'll take a quick walk down with the camera, and we'll uh, we'll see how we did on the target. We are on the target, but we did, we did hit all over the place. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, not a very good job shooting that pistol. But I think that's more me than the gun right now because it is difficult to hold and uh, do that with. So, uh, so we'll break it here. We'll put up another target and uh, we'll try it double action just for fun. Okay, let's load up six more and try double action. Um, really don't know how well this is going to work out with the uh, firearm malfunctions that I'm having, but we'll give it a try. Okay, and there is six. Bring the loading gate all the way forward. Now let's try it again. again. Yeah, the loading gate's not staying forward again. Let me open this up and back up to those two. One, two, three, four, five, six. I tell you, I'm getting a lot better group in double action. Nothing there. Second, two, three, four. I think that should have been the sixth one. Let's go around one more time. Yeah, light strike again. I'm not sure if I'm on the right one here. Yeah, I guess I was. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think I see number six. Light strike. Well, I, I think I shot all six. At least 
shall see. I'm going to have to adjust that keeper. From a, a shooting point of view, it, uh, really doesn't shoot badly. But she is old and a little bit worn, so I'm not real surprised that we're having some troubles. Yep, that was all six. Okay. Good. Uh, oh, I take that back. One of the ones I ejected was live. So let us throw it back in there again and see if we can get it to go boom. What's happening is I'm not getting the uh, I'm all the way back and the uh, the the trigger is not coming off the sear and that's holding the, the mechanism of the gun up. So I will have to look at that. And it could just be a bad a bad round. I do have a strike on it, but it's not very it's not very hard. So yeah, we definitely have some, we still got some mechanical work to do on this to get it to be a little bit more reliable. But the point was, you know, I just want to see if it would fire, and it does. I wasn't worried about the, uh, the uh, barrel and stuff because there's no rust on the gun. You know, the gun's in good shape from that point of view. And I am using, I am using the appropriate rounds that have been loaded. You know, they're not real hot or any of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, when I do get a good hit, when I do get a good strike on this, it, it, it does do a nice job. So uh, I think it's just some of the mechanicals in here need to be dressed up a little bit. Because uh, when I do get a good solid strike, it's a good, a nice deep strike. All right, well, let's go down and take a look at the target again. Uh, you'll see we did a little bit better, not much. And of course, with the gun not going off and going off late and everything, it makes life a little tougher. But so here we go. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's not uh, that's not too bad. But anyway, so that's the 1889 model Bodeo, which is you know a pretty old firearm, hundred and some odd years old. Okay, so after we got back from the shooting, uh, we sat down at the bench and did a little bit more work. Here are the results. Hi folks, I'm back at the shop and I just wanted to say um, I, uh, I removed the gate from the gun and uh, went, went through and checked it again for function and it worked just fine. It didn't hang up. Every time it closed, it closed tight. It didn't, it didn't stall on the way down like it was doing before. Uh, both single action and double action seemed to be just fine. So um, I'm going under the assumption that uh, I've got a problem with that, with that pin. So basically what I did was I shaved just a scotch more off the tip of the pin. And I also noticed that the pin kind of flared out. It got fatter as it was going out. And, and that's just from the welding and all that stuff. So basically I squared the pin up. And on the original pin, there was a bit of a, of a uh, circular cut. There was a radius in here, and I added that radius back in. So basically, that, that's what I did after I got the uh, firearm home from the range. So let's put it back together and uh, see what happens. So here's the, there's the gate. There's the lock and the spring. Let's 
see if that that helps at all. I think what was going on is the spring that that part was either too long or uh, or too wide or both and may have been causing multiple problems. So so that's one, two, and what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at how close that thing comes in here. You know, does it go all the way down? And you can see it's going all the way down and rotating good. You know, even if I if I lift this out a little bit, you know, it's still still doing fine. Um, single action, same thing. And before I was having a problem where I pull the trigger all the way back, but the uh, it wouldn't quite drop off the sear, and that now seems to be fine. So I think I think we've corrected the problem. And uh, you know that's what happens. You don't. I don't. I didn't have any documentation on the actual dimensions of that of that pin. I did the best I could when I gave the information to my brother-in-law, and he did the best he could putting it together based on my information. So, but I think I think we're in good shape now. I think it's where it ought to be, and it looks like it's working great. So uh, hopefully that's all straightened out. I hope you enjoyed watching me work on it and uh, seeing it shoot. And uh, maybe I'll play around with it some more and see if I can get it to be a little bit more reliable. Have a great afternoon and thanks for watching.